Well, good morning, and thanks for joining us as we continue through our series entitled, What's the Matter? And it's a play on words, of course. It's not that we're saying, you know, what's the matter with you? But rather, what's the important matter or issue at hand that we need to spend some quality time giving attention to as we move forward in 2021? Well, I'm Tim Unfried, one of the pastors here at Oasis Community Church, and it's my absolute joy and privilege to bring some words of encouragement to you as we dive into today's topic. And there are some matters that are just absolutely vital to our health and well-being and to our future growth this year. You know, so far we've covered the important matter of prayer and just how vital it is to our life as we learn that prayer is simply talking or communicating our heart to our Heavenly Father and engaging in learning to listen to Him as a personal relationship with anyone is always a two-way street of communication. And that God has made a way for us to come into his presence as his kids and have a relationship with him like a great dad has a great relationship with his kids. So too, through prayer, we develop this personal, intimate relationship with God. That's one of the reasons why we as a church are doing 21 days of prayer and fasting. It's that we want to be intentional at reigniting our love for the Lord and to press in it and develop a deeper relationship with him. And we're learning that prayer matters. We also looked at why the Bible matters and took a deep look at how important it is to get into the Word of God and more importantly, getting the Word of God into us. I mean, God's Word is our foundation that we build our lives upon. You know, it's through the Bible that we come to learn of who God is and who we are and discover His will and His ways and His character as revealed through the Scriptures. You know, that the Bible can be trusted and is reliable and contains all that we need for life and learning to have a relationship with God. The Bible matters. Well, this week, we're going to be continuing our series by looking at why community matters. I think this is a tremendously important issue to talk about because there's been quite an assault on community over the past year. I mean, just think for a moment about how various communities have been affected by the events of the past 12 months. Take the communities of business, those people who have had to deal with government mandates and lockdowns, where they've had to reimagine how to conduct business and stay afloat financially. You know, tragically, thousands of small businesses, which make up 70% of the nation's economy, have shut down and are no longer in business. And then there's communities of families who have had to deal and manage school closures and having to figure out the education of their kids at home while they're trying to figure out their work schedules and such. And think about how the community of family also has been affected in caring for loved ones who have had an accident or is ill and are hospitalized. You know, I've, I have a brother-in-law who recently had an accident and ended up in the hospital with a brain injury, who has now moved into a nursing facility and no one can physically visit him. No one is allowed into his room to be with him and he is isolated and alone. Maybe you experienced this yourself with a family member who got injured or is ill and you can't be present with them due to restrictions. And then there's the community that I want to spend the remainder of our time talking about today. That is the community of faith or the church community. And that has undergone tremendous challenges. In fact, last year, many churches closed their doors permanently and disbanded completely. Most others were forced to go on online service format and the challenges of building and maintaining community with its people became very challenging. In fact, George Barna reported that a third of Christians stopped engaging altogether as they stopped listening online to the messages and encouragement that their pastors were bringing. They, they did not return to the church when the doors were opened and services resumed in person. They just stopped meeting completely. A third of Christians in America, that stat is alarming. Well, for those of you who, out of necessity, have had to stay connected to us via the online services, thank you. Thank you for not giving up or giving in. I mean, thank you for not throwing in the talent and just saying that the church doesn't really matter. Thanks for being faith-filled and staying engaged during this season. You know, we believe that you'll be back in person soon. So thank you for not giving up and checking out. You know, this is exactly what the enemy wants for the community of God's people. 
If he can scatter us and keep us disconnected and disengaged, well, that plays right into his hand for what he wants to accomplish. You see, Satan hates the church. He wants to destroy the church. Why? Because the church is and has the answer for the world today and is the primary vehicle through which God is working to bring about his vision for saving the world. It's through the church, it's through you and me that God's message of salvation and reconciliation, the message of hope and healing is going out into our surrounding communities. You know, it's no wonder why there's such an assault on church communities. And an assault that I believe is, is only going to intensify in the days to come. Because if the enemy can divide us, separate us, silence us, or scatter us, he'll be able to keep us from the God-given assignment of discipling the nations. And in turn, he will roll out his plan and his purposes for discipling the nation into his vision of what the world should look like. And that vision does not include you, me, or God himself. You see, Satan wants to be worshipped and sit enthroned as God, and he will go to any lengths to see our nation discipled, to see people conform to his agenda and become followers of his vision. You see, there is a battle raging for the soul of our nation, for the soul of our communities, for the soul of our families, and for our very own soul. You know, when we became a Christian, we were born onto the battlefield. Now, we know that our enemy isn't people, okay, who are created in the image and likeness of God. But according to Ephesians 6, 12 to 13, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Our battle isn't with people, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Now is not the time to go AWOL as Christians. And what's so incredibly frustrating is to see a third of professing Christians just laying down their spiritual weapons and, and walking off the battlefield because it's just not convenient. It's not meeting my needs. It's, it's not working for me. So I'm going to throw in the towel and disengage. You know, I couldn't imagine what it would feel like to be at war in my foxhole with others who are supposed to have my back, and they just decide, yeah, I'm done. I'm out of here. You know, now's not the time, or is it ever the time to throw in the towel on the church? Now is the time more than ever that we get a fresh revelation on the importance of community, this wonderful gathering of people called the church, and to be united together to understand that God is working out his plans through the church and that Satan is doing everything to stop the church, but we're not going to give up or give in. Amen? So today I'd like to walk us through four reasons why community matters. And this is a vital and important issue, especially as it relates to God's plan and mission and vision. The first thing we see is that through community, your God-given assignment can be accomplished. You know, Ephesians 4, 1 through 3 says, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord. You know, Paul is a prisoner writing from a jail cell to the church and says, I urge you. You know, this isn't a nice suggestion or I think it'd be a good idea if, but no, he is putting the pressure of urgency in his message upon the people of God. I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling. Here is the idea where we get this assignment from God. You know, that we would live in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. And how are they to do it? With all humility and gentleness, with patience. This definitely is a season where we need to continue in humility, gentleness, and being patient with one another, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. See, Paul is seeking to stir up the people of God and to remind them to be the people who are eager to be involved in God's mission, that they would seek to be in unity together 
and not throw in the towel because things are difficult. In fact, the word community literally means common unity. And Paul is urging for the church to be united together in its purposes. You know, I wonder how eager and patient are the third of Christians who have walked away from community called the local church. Instead, they have walked away from their God-given assignment to be participants together with the people of God to accomplish together his mission and vision of discipling the nation. I'm not saying or making any judgment about their salvation. You know, only God knows. But they have been cut off from participating with the local church of believers, which is God's plan for reaching our world, and have stopped participating in administrating God's plan for discipling the nations. This is always accomplished in and through the community called the church. You see, you can't do it alone. You can't do that in isolation, but together, as the community of God's people, we can accomplish all that God desires for our community. I want you to catch this, that even Paul, who is in isolation, separated from the people of God by a prison cell, is still engaged and activated to fulfill his God-given assignment of serving Jesus by writing and encouraging the church. He's still engaged even though he is in isolation. Well, how encouraging is that? You know, to those in our church community that are by necessity isolated from the physical gathering of the church here, there is just great encouragement. You can still accomplish the assignment that God has called you to, even if you're isolated. How? Paul was intentional about staying connected to the people of God. And God has ways for you to stay connected with us. This might mean that you connect with an online community Bible study that we're offering. You know, I I was so encouraged this week as I logged into uh, Will and Tara Miller's Tuesday night Zoom Bible discussion. And to see people like Mark and Lynn Morris and Bob Renair and others remaining connected by studying God's word together and praying for one another. They, They continue to press forward, though by necessity they are isolated. And what I witnessed in this group was an eagerness, a desire to learn and to grow and to continue being connected to the body of Christ. I was so encouraged this past Wednesday night to see the youth gather together, to see Scott Hammond's apologetics class well attended both in physical attendance and on Zoom, and to see both men's groups and women's groups attended by people who know the value of community. To see our young adults on Thursday beginning to thrive and to grow. Our our living grace class is now resuming online that focuses on mental health and wholeness. There are ways to connect with us. And to all of you involved in the leading or participating, I just want to say, well done. Keep going. You see, through community, your God-given assignment can be accomplished. I want to speak to leaders here for a moment. Uh, This is from senior leadership all the way to people who lead ministries or who lead groups here at Oasis. Everything rises and falls with leadership. You see, if if you have a good leader connected and serving in the areas of their God-given assignment, well, you can expect a good outcome. It's the law of sowing and reaping. Whatever you sow into, in time you will reap a harvest if you don't give up. Now, if you have bad leaders, what can you expect? Bad outcomes. You reap what you sow. Uh, The same law is in place. And if you're sowing seeds of discontent, disunity, or divisiveness, you can expect a greater harvest of discontent, disunity, and divisiveness amongst the people. And if you have no leaders, what can you expect? Nothing. Because nothing is being sown. You see, everything rises and falls upon leaders. So to all of Oasis' leaders, I want to encourage you to rediscover the assignment that God has called you to. And we're all called and given different assignments and different ways in which to lead the people of God. And if you've lost sight of that, now is the time and the season to reconnect with the heart of God, get a fresh vision for uh, what he's called you to do, and It's within the lane and the season of your assignment that you will discover that his purposes for your leadership can still be accomplished. 
Even if you're sitting in an isolated jail cell, God's assignment can be accomplished through you. Nothing can stop that but one thing, you. So, I believe that 2021 is going to be a time of refreshing, uh, refreshing the God-given assignment that is for you, and a re-engagement of those purposes in the life of this church. Now, for those of you who are participating in the various ministries of the church, this concept is equally important. That as you are eager to participate in the life of community here, online or in person, God is wanting to supply you with grace so that you can grow in your faith, so that you can be healed from your wounds, so that you can discover the purposes for your life and be equipped and unleashed into the spheres of influence that God has given to you to make a difference. And that happens as the body is connected together, each one doing its part. You know, Ephesians 4, 15 to 16 says, Speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Every part is important in community. And if you belong to Oasis Community Church, you have an important role to play in God's unfolding story, and it is accomplished through community. And being connected to one another and carrying out our God-given assignments is how we begin to accomplish this. Now, this doesn't mean that relationally you are connected to every single person. That would be impossible. But I'd like to use the Lego analogy to help us understand this idea a bit better. You know, some Legos are are different from others in that some Legos have more connecting points and uh, and others have fewer connecting points. Um, And that doesn't make one better than the other. And our lives are like Legos in that God has designed us with a certain capacity. And that doesn't make some people better than others. It's just simply that God has designed us um, special and unique. So it really has more to do with our God-given purpose. And what we want is that your Lego, your life, however big or small, is connected with others in meaningful relationships, and that your Lego is full of connecting points, and when joined with others, is going to be helpful to the whole. You know, some Christians, because they have chosen to disconnect from the local church community, they're like loose Legos that are scattered on the floor. I mean, have you ever had a kid who loved playing with Legos, and you walk into the room barefoot and step on a bunch of those little Legos that are scattered on the floor? I mean, it's painful, right? Well, we don't want you to be disconnected, scattered on the floor of life, causing pain and injury to others. But when those Legos are strategically connected in a meaningful way, shout out to Trevor who who put this together, you notice that not every Lego is touching every other Lego, but they're all connected in one cohesive design. And that's us. We want you to have your relational connectors filled, and as we come together as one, we are a team, and together we serve God's purposes. Every Lego life is meaningful and has purpose. But when you're missing Legos, things begin to break down um, and fall apart because every part is important and has a role to play. You know, I learned this truth this week the hard way as my hot water heater blew up, turning my garage into a raging river. You know, all of a sudden, this one system in our house that was taken for granted now becomes extremely important to us, right? I mean, we couldn't take showers for days, couldn't use the toilets, couldn't run the dishwasher, make coffee in the morning. I had to pack up the dirty pots and pans that the kids had used uh, to cook with and take it to church to wash. I mean, I got a quick lesson on appreciating all the systems in the house that I had taken for granted. And let me tell you, when that new water heater was installed and the hot water began to flow again, There was much rejoicing in the Unfreed household. I mean, every part matters. Every part has a contribution to make. 
So it's through community being connected together in relationship that we all can accomplish our God-given assignments and build one another up as we each do our part. It is critically important that you discover the assignment that God has for you. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You see, God has assignments for each of us, and there are things that we are to discover and accomplish, and it's in and through community called the church that we can be encouraged and equipped to discover this and to be activated in his service. Well, a second reason why community matters is that through community, we become burden lifters. You know, Galatians 6.2 says, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now, later in verse 5, Paul says that each person will have to bear his own load. So, which is it? You know, in Scripture, we see that there are different types of burdens. There's heavy burdens and light burdens. If it's a heavy burdens, We got to step up and help others. If it's light burdens, you got to take it yourself. That's just part of being a responsible person who handles their own personal responsibilities. Now, heavy burdens that we can help others out with would be things like uh, when someone is going through something pretty traumatic, catastrophic illness, someone going through a divorce, someone who has a child in the hospital, and it's, it's just too heavy a burden to bear alone. And the people of God can come alongside and help that person or family through that time. This is where through community, we have an opportunity to lift burdens and serve one another in love. You know, this hit me personally this past season as I got the China virus and it landed me in the hospital for five days and I was bedridden for 25 days. I had absolutely no energy and could barely get out of bed for more than a couple minutes before I was just completely exhausted. And Theresa was doing her best to quarantine and was working long hours and shouldering much of the household duties as best as she could when Oasis Community's meal train kicked into gear and for a week we had meals show up on our doorstep to ease the burden. Let me tell you, that was a humbling experience. You know, because as pastors and leaders, we typically are on the burden lifting side of helping others, not on the receiving of help. And it was such a beautiful thing to have a burden lifted from off of our backs until we were in a better position to take that responsibility back on. We're just so thankful for Oasis. And and thank you to the many people that were praying for me while I was in the hospital and for helping to lift our burdens when I got home. You know, I don't understand how anyone can go through life without Christian community. I I mean, I really don't. Because it's through community that we have an opportunity to lift heavy burdens from people and to help them in their time of need. And hasn't this been a season, a year of heavy burdens? So my question to you today is, will you be a burden lifter in this community? Are you available to help others who are going through something difficult? where they just need someone to come alongside and help to bear a burden? Well, you won't be able to do that if you're disconnected from community and living an isolated life, but you can be if you're relationally, intentionally connected to others and are aware of the needs that are present in this community. You know, our church has had a wonderful opportunity to help lift burdens through our Oasis Cares Fund. Literally thousands of dollars have been given away to help people through the crisis of lost employment due to the virus or to get food to hundreds upon hundreds of people that were just in a tight spot. And this is just one of the ways that we as a church are burden lifters in our community. And that happens because of your generosity and because you are connected to this community, because you're serving together in ministry. You have made an impact in the lives of hundreds of people. Well, a third reason why community matters is through through community, we display the gospel to the greater surrounding community. 
You know, in John 13, 34 to 35, Jesus says, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Oasis Community Church matters to our surrounding community. You know, Jesus is saying that our testimony to the world that he is alive is going to be recognized by the surrounding community as they see us in loving action. I mean, that's why we do the things that we feel called to do. That's why we host things like the Country Fair, Sunday Fun Days, Christmas Spectacular, men's and women's events. And that's why we provide children and youth events. That's why we have a community food pantry. And that's why we turned our worship center into a schoolhouse to help people who had to be at work but had nowhere to put their kids for school, and we turned the worship center into a massive Zoom classroom for kids. You see, as we love one another and give of ourselves to serve the community, they're getting a firsthand glimpse into the love of God as they see it displayed within us. You know, notice that Jesus didn't say, a new commandment I give to you, just love yourself. No, it's in the way that we love one another And you can't love one another unless you're in community with each other. And this is why we're oftentimes hosting community events. And we're we're, now we're all called to reach our neighbors and have uh, influence in our personal sphere of influence. But um, sometimes the best apologetic for the gospel is in the way that we treat one another together in the greater community. Well, the last reason why community matters is that through community, we display the glory of God who is a God of community. Think about it. There is such an assault these days on marriage, gender, sexuality, family, the church. Why? Because Satan hates God and wants to redefine all these things, not after God's definition, but after his own. He wants to mar everything good that God has created. You see, God creates, but Satan counterfeits. He gives alternative options, which really only lead to brokenness and pain. But what we see is that God is the God of community. The Father, Son, and Spirit have always been in perfect relationship. They demonstrate the perfect ideal for all communities. And we are created in his image and likeness, both male and female, each filled with dignity, worth, and value, equality with diversity. See, God's intention is that we would experience covenantal love and faithfulness. And that's why he created marriage between one man and one woman. Yet that is the very thing that is under assault in our day. You know, he created us male and female, but Satan wants to destroy that and change the definitions. In fact, right now there is legislation proposed that would change the terminology of God-given identities. The, The familial terms of father, mother, son, daughter, sister, brother, husband and wife, and so on, are now being changed to things like parent, child, sibling, spouse, these generic terms. See, there's a gender war and a redefinition going on that seeks to undermine what God has established. You know, God desires that our sexuality be experienced within the boundaries of covenant marriage. But Satan has attacked the institution of God-ordained marriage and is seeking to disciple a nation after his ways By saying you can find freedom sexually in any way that you want to and in any form with anyone you want to. This is just a direct assault on God himself, a direct assault on his character, his will, and his ways that are always meant to bring us good. So marriage and family and gender and sexuality are all under assault. Well, not only does God have an ideal for families, but he has an ideal for his family called the church. And what's under attack? The church. Because Satan knows that it's through the church that the manifold wisdom of God is displayed. He knows that we carry the answer for the world's problem, and his name is Jesus. And he will do everything to discredit and destroy the church, 
You know, that's been his plan from the beginning. But we, as a community of God's people, we are to display the glory of God to the world. But Satan wants glory for himself, church. And I just want you to see the great importance of our community. And I want to encourage us in the season that's in front of us to be reignited with a love and a passion for that which God loves. You know, Jesus loves the church. And I want us to understand that God has an assignment for us in this community that we, especially in this season, can be burden lifters and that we can display the gospel to our surrounding community and that we can display the glory of God by uniting around his definition, around his will, around his ways, and display and mirror that to those around us with the answer that the world needs to hear, and it's Jesus. Would you join me today in recommitting your heart to God's purposes for this community called Oasis Community Church? If you have never given your heart to Jesus Christ, I want to invite you to respond to God's love, which was displayed through the life of His Son, Jesus Christ, the Son of God who came to live the perfect life that you couldn't live, and to die on a cross in your place for your sins as a substitute for you, that He rose again, He seated at the right hand of the Father, praying for you today to surrender your heart to Him. You know, you can pray, which simply means talk to God. You can say this from your own heart and make it your own. You can say, God, I believe that you love me. I believe that you sent your son to die for my sins so that I could be forgiven, so that I can be brought into a relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me, for dying for me, and for rising again so that I can have a new life with a new heart and new desires. Help me by your Holy Spirit to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, if you prayed that for the first time, please reach out to us to let us know that that you're part of the family of God. You can email me at tim at occphx.com and I'd love to follow up with you. Well, church, this is the time to move forward together in 2021 with eagerness and unity into the things that God has for us. We love you and we're praying for you and we hope to see you in person soon. God bless.